Artworthy Podcast, sharing our love of the fiber arts from the heart of the Ozarks. Glisten, a beautiful sight. We're happy tonight, walking in a winter wonderland. Gone away is the bluebird. Here to stay is the new bird. He sings a love song as we go along, walking in a winter wonderland. In the meadow we can build a snowman And pretend that he is Parson Brown He'll say, are you married? We'll say, no man But you can do the job when you're in town Later on, we'll conspire As we dream by the fire To face unafraid the plans that we made Walking in a winter wonderland. Walking in a winter wonderland. Big finish. Walking in a winter wonderland. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Bet you didn't expect that. <laughs> Welcome to the Knitworthy Podcast. Today, this is episode 21. we got to say long time no see. I know. It's been a few weeks. You'll notice we are in a completely different what? place. I we know. Moved. We're almost, well, Brienne is unpacked. I'm unpacked. I still have some, I haven't, been, I saved all my craft stuff for last. Can you believe it? I am shocked. It's, 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 it's a symbol of the nobility of the season that I put others first. That was beautiful. <laughs> it truly was. Did you like it? I did. I okay. liked it a lot. Good. <laughs> well, we're moved and we, we are. We like our new house. Oh, we do. Yes. I didn't expect to like it as much as I do. Yeah. But I think what helped was I uncovered a room in back that I didn't know was really a room room. I thought mm-hmm. it was kind of like a storage closet. Yeah. I have a little room for my fiber. Yay. <laughs> First time I'll have a studio. Usually a studio is my closet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. More fiber than clothes, as you can tell by the way I dress. <laughs> You're so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel being here? I, it feels good. You know, last night I finally got the last of everything unpacked. Yeah. And, um, you know, it helps. I, I had this in we have like an upstairs family room which is where like our level of the house and so um you know having like the back of the family room was just like a this mess of boxes and tables and this mishmash of stuff that I just hadn't had a time to place yet so right. yesterday I got the last of it all finished you wow. should come up and see I should huh yeah so, and then I got our bedroom done, and um, Dad hung up some pictures for me, and it, so it feels good. Oh, that's wonderful. It makes yeah. a difference, doesn't it? It does. Well, you know what I did. What did so, you do? You know, I guess everybody's different, but I love, I, I notice that when I go in a place, well, let's put it this way. Do you, when you walk into the bathroom, mm-hmm. do you think to yourself, this is a warm and inviting place I want to be, like a public restroom? No, not really. Do you think, nothing like the smell of a public restroom. <laughs> I've never, never once thought that. No, but if you walk in a place and it's just kind of so-so, but it smells lovely, mm-hmm. don't you just go, oh, I love this place. I, right? Yes. You know, smells yeah. are very strong, emotional, like, tie for people. They are. Yes. And it can bring you back to a place in time where maybe you have a happy memory, hopefully happy memories, yeah. you know. But, um, so before I left... I contacted Brianne's friend, who is our local Sensi mm-hmm. um, person. She's our Sensi dealer. She's our connection. <laughs> we meet her in the back alley. <laughs> she goes to my church. Oh, okay. There's no back alley dealings. <laughs> yeah. So I ended up. You can see my little Sensi um, little. I don't know warmer. It's a warmer. Mm-hmm. 
um, is right back there. And I haven't put it in one for today, but um, I ended up picking out, what's it called? Something crumb. Crumble. I'm gonna forget. Something crumble. Something crumble. Mm -hmm. Oh man, it's like a little bit cidery, a little yeah. bit like a baked good, but it's not really strongly baked. No. And then we have, was it honey cider is the other one? Honey pear cider. Honey pear cider. Mm -hmm. So it's like a little bit fruity, a little yeah. bit cidery. So like before oh. the before the moving yeah. trucks even arrived, mom was like, she's like, we have to get our Sensi set up. And yeah. so we're on the main level and she's like trying to find the right place for it. Yeah. Do we want it on the kitchen counter? Right. Where do we want it? And she you knows she's like, now which which scent? And we need to make the house smell like us because you know when you first move into a house, yeah. it smells like other people. It may smell good, but it doesn't smell like what seems like home to you. Right. And so tell them what when the big burly moving guys come in and they're like, you know, yeah. my size. Oh, stop it. Yeah. But they came in. What they was the first thing they said? It smells good in here. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been baking? <laughs> Yes, of course. Before I move in, yeah. I always think. Mm -hmm. Would you like some apple pie? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it smelled like home before it ever looked like home. Yeah. So that really helped me settle in. Yeah. That's how That's how I like to do it. And so was there something that really did it for you? Was it being the last of things unpacked? Or is there something else that made you feel more homey? I think... Word. Homey. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I always talk. You know, street talk. She does. Yeah. She's street wise. Um, Go with your own bad self. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, when we lived in the other house, mm -hmm. uh, we used your the bed that was already in the room mm -hmm. downstairs. And so, like, we got, when we moved into this house, then we got our bed out of storage and we got our sheets and yesterday we got our nightstands and our bedspread and it was like getting the bedspread all washed up and on our bed and, and then getting some things hung up and the nightstands all put together and I was like oh my gosh this feels like my room did you hear the angels sing? I did I was like oh <laughs> I was like thank you so we are renting the house back from the people who bought our house. I mean, how often does something like that happen? Probably we're, not too often. We're crazy. <laughs> and so um, it wasn't like we went out and, and chose the house, but we're loving it. And so John and I are on the bottom level, so we are now in um, basement. But basement in Missouri, because we have all the hills, there, it's a walkout basement, which right. means I have one wall behind me that is this wall behind there. It has dirt behind it. Not, I mean, I wouldn't see it. It's got a foundation. But so we are dug into the into the side of the hill, mm -hmm. but this part walks out into what the backyard the where there's a lot of trees. See. Yeah, I'm pointing trees. And I'm really excited because I think we've got oak trees back there. I saw acorns. Yeah. Do we have enough leaves for you back there? Enough leaves for mm -hmm. me? Uh well, Ailish was having a lot of fun. She's she was. really enjoying. She she was in the backyard. She goes, I want to go explore. She has this very high little voice. It's very mm -hmm. adorable. I want to go explore outside. I said, we'll get your jacket on and your shoes, and you can go and uh, explore out towards where the little play set is. And then, you know, but that's really as far as I want you to go. And so we look out there about 10 minutes later, and she is, like, scooping up leaves and, like, throwing them yeah. onto herself. It's like a shower of she leaves. She was having so much fun. John and I saw her from out our window and we're like that's the best sight ever is seeing like, her enjoy that outdoors such pure joy yeah and you she know? didn't know anybody was watching her she was just having fun oh it was awesome yeah. that that was that was yes. a good moment and also because of the hills here mm -hmm. um homes are more are, there are a lot of single level homes but there are a lot of three level homes mm -hmm. so it's not like um you know, it's an unusual thing. But so we're on the lower level. Mm -hmm. Rianne's on the very top level where the parents and the kids would sleep. And they did the coolest thing over their garage. They made a big playroom. Yeah. And that's what's Brianne's family room. But it's got a built in playhouse. It does. I have already, it's, it's, I have already hit my head on the door. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, I mean, literally way. drywall. They drywalled in a yeah. playhouse. It's so cute. The kids absolutely yeah. love it. And that's where all the toys are going. Yeah. And that's where all the toys are staying. <laughs> it's like best house ever for a kid. I know. 
<laughs> They're so excited. They yeah. love that. It's a nice, it's actually quite spacious. And it so it really does function well for a family yeah. room for you. And then on the main level, my son Isaac, he's sleeping in what was the office. He has absolutely no closet. <laughs> Luckily, the child owns two pairs of pants and three shirts, I think. You know, that's about it. So <laughs> his clothes fit in the hall closet. <laughs> But he Aww. likes it though. It works. It, it was does. either that or he had to be in the small, um, what I'm calling my studio now, which has no windows. It's it's really is a basement room, and so um, I, I I love it. Yeah, you know it's great for me. And then we're sharing the main level. We're sharing with, the main with level, Isaac, of course. Yeah, yeah. And so that's where the kitchen and the and there's like a small family room. That's where we put our Christmas tree and all. We'll pop a couple pictures in so you yeah. can kind of see that. Uh, my older son Jared and Danielle came over and they got Brian's Christmas tree set up. Yes. And so we we did not actually miss the holiday, which is kind of nice. No. But I had just started working on the rest of my Christmas presents last night, trying to purchase them. Yeah. I'm talking about last minute. But you know, there were so many things to do. It was like, okay, well, worst comes to worst, I need to give certificates or something. Sure. But anyway, so it's kind of nice we have our joint family room that we can enjoy time together, mm -hmm. but we each have our private spaces. So I am like, this could Great. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're it's loving a it. Great house. But we're, we have to start showing it in January. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. We'll enjoy it while we're here. We will. <laughs> and yeah. so that is, you know, that's really my gooseberry for the week that we're finally settled. Mm -hmm. And it's been um, a wonderful surprise finding out yeah. this works out great for us. That was my gooseberry too, for sure. Was it? Was just yeah. the fact that we're that we're in we're done the old <gasps> house is sold oh goodness yes done finally yes and now we're in the process of moving forward yes. whatever that looks like we have no clue what that looks like but I don't know. hey it's a good step you know to be out of the payments through too much so yes especially at the holidays <laughs> it's a really nice time. surprise so yes. and thank you to everyone who was so sweet to tell us that they were uh thinking about us and praying for us and helping that our move was uh, a smooth transition. It re really was as smooth as a move can be. I was really surprised. It went really well. Yeah. I mean, we did end up spending like five nights in a hotel. Oh, but, but there are worse things. You know, and the, the beautiful thing about that is that was a lovely gift from the person who bought our house. It was. <laughs> and so we got a little mini vacation, which we didn't get one this year. Did you? Did you have a vacation this year? No. <laughs> so that was our vacation. We got to stay in a, a great hotel. What yeah. is the Holiday Inn Holiday, Express? Holiday Inn so Express. You're coming to Branson. Branson. Hey, Holiday Inn Express was a great room. The room came with a refrigerator and a microwave. Yeah. I mean, not. it didn't look like, you know, I mean, it looks like it belongs. So right. it was like they had done a nice job of putting it in there. And um, so you could... I mean, you wouldn't really cook in your room, but you could warm things up and mm -hmm. stuff. And then they had a great full-on breakfast. Oh, it was huge. Did you know? I was shocked. Because they have a machine that makes pancakes. <gasps> My kids were like... Did you try it? Amazed. Yeah. I didn't try it. Tell me how does it work. Okay, so here's what you do. It's all in one machine, and it's all enclosed, so you don't have to do anything except you press a button. And the batter pours, and there's a little, like, a line thing that shows you, how, like, how far your pancake is in the process of being cooked. And it basically just, it drops the batter, and then it goes for, like, a minute. Okay? It's I'm like not going to do it for a minute. It's like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, the guy who invented something, you know, where yeah. the egg goes through the whole stuff, but you don't get to see any of the fun stuff. Right. But you know that guy invented it. Right. But then, at the end, the pancake just drops out onto your plate. Ta da! After like a minute. What? It's amazing. And you've got this perfectly cooked pancake. Yeah. And it's beautiful. And all the bacon you want to eat. They also had gravy, didn't they? Great biscuits they, and gravy. They did. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously. And different kinds of eggs and. It yeah, was, and I didn't yes. have to cook any of it, so it was pretty awesome. Yeah, we were quite busy during that time period also, but still, the kids thought it was a great vacation. Yeah. They had an indoor pool, so we could have gone swimming had we had swimsuits. I but know. My where kids, do you find one this time of year? Right, my kids were out of their bathing suits, like, you know, by August. I guess so. you could have bought long johns and cut them off or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure to button the flap. Go to Bass Pro and, yeah. you know, find something to use as 
swimsuits. We yeah. could have done that. Oh, well. But, you know, so fun. The kids thought it was great. Oh, they thought that it was, like, the best thing ever. And, you know, really, after the, the hubbub of packing, it was quite nice to just not have to worry about trying to find my sheets and get my bed ready. I got to just, you know, sleep in a nice, fresh bed. So mm -hmm. thank you very much, you wonderful Holiday Inn Express people. That's I right. highly recommend if you come to Branson... Holiday and Express. Holiday and Express. That's on our indoor road. Yes. <laughs> well, what are you wearing today, Mom? Well, you know I... what we didn't even do? What? We didn't even introduce ourselves. Oh. Oh. I'm Mom. Hi. Hi. Let's this... change it up. I am Mom. And I'm Brienne. No. Mama <laughs> Linda, also known as Stony Brook. Oh, my face is going glowy. Oh, it is. Uh, it's yeah, beautiful. You look lovely specialty lighting like uh what's her name the newsletter news like news lady that does always special lighting oh i don't know um whatever my name is brianne also known as being brianne on roger and instagram did i say that i'm stony brook yes you did Psh, I'm just... <laughs> that's okay yeah that's who yeah. we are so mom what, yeah. are you, what are you wearing let's talk about knitting well honestly i have no clue what this is it's a shawl it's a beautiful shawl with mm -hmm. a ruffle if anyone recognizes it, I thought it was the Medusa Cascade. That was the pattern by my friend Tabitha. But I looked up my project and it was a different yarn. Mm. So I think the Medusa Cascade that is in my projects is actually one that I lost. Mm. Well, I didn't lose it. I left it behind at Chili's in the booth. Oh, you did? A few years back. And I went back the same day and oh, it wasn't there. How convenient. Mm. Anyway. That's what this is. I have no clue. It's not my projects, but it's got a cute little ruffle. It is. And it's just pearl and stockinette um, varied. Very so I have cute. no idea, but I was trying to not look so frumpy, so I thought throw stuff on. And then Stop I, it. this is a finished project I'm wearing, which is another, was it Night Sky? What is it called, Brianne? Night Sky hat mm -hmm. in Julie Spins yarn, which was going to be a shawl. You know, I always tell you things I'm going to do with stuff. I never end up doing what I say I'm gonna do. That's okay. But um, you keep us you keep us perplexed <laughs> and always questioning what's uh -huh. gonna happen with this thing. This one hasn't even been blocked. It's super cute. But though. I'm loving the uh, for those who don't like super slouchy hats mm -hmm. but you don't feel like you can pull off a skull cap, you know. This is really a nice combo and you can you know you can decide oh I could do a whole I could have a tall head. You could it's a baker's cap. <laughs> or, you know, you can do it off to one side and be gentil. Ooh. You know, but anyway, it's very flexible, but it's not, uh, it's fingering weight. But I have to say, it doesn't feel like it takes very long to do at all because it's on size, oh, I don't know, I'm guessing five needles maybe. Okay. It's an ish. I like the ish. But anyway, so it's not like you do it on size two, so it doesn't feel like knitting socks. Mm -hmm. It's really a great way to use yarn and I started on a pair of fingerless mittens I was gonna do the pearl Soho again the color block mittens that I don't do color block on yeah because I just like how they fit and I was lazy and I thought I don't I, I was in the hotel actually and started them and I was worried that I would get them twisted and make a Mobius one and yeah. so I did the ribbing but when I joined to go in the round after that I ended up really messing up and I thought I could live with it but I can't so I ripped them out. I'll start again. How far did you go before you decided I can't live with that? Um, that's right. Yeah. It's just yarn. It is just yarn. That's what I'm wearing. How about you? Uh, I am wearing the Quaker yarn structure. I do want to try that. It's in my yes, in my favorites. Yes, this is a uh, going to be a Christmas gift for my future sister-in-law Danielle. She asked for a shawl or a scarf. And Danielle, close your ears. Don't look at this for you to look at right now um and yeah and this is out of jojo land tonic um which i chose to do it not only just because of the color because she really likes pink but also uh because of the fact that it has a, a higher acrylic content and so i don't have to worry about it you know, like going through the wash and becoming just this thing that she can't use anymore. Okay. That so, makes sense. Yes. So. Yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. And is it blocked? Yes. Okay. And so you could have chose to stretch the heck out of it and make it really flat, but you decided to let it be ripply. Yes. 
Well, and with, I like the, that. with the acrylic, there's only so much that you can block out of it. Oh, that's you know? true. I like it like that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. We have quite a bit that has come off the needles. Should we talk about that? Okay. All right. Let's, you know, and actually I have even more. I just lose track of. You have been quite productive. Well, I was, you know, really, it's a great stress reliever, obviously. And so in between things, I would be, you know, working on something. And I know I've got packed even some things that I got done just before I, we took off. I just dumped all my projects in one big box. Yeah. I'll get it later. Oh, you know what? Let me show this really quick. Um, this is the only thing that I've been working on lately, uh, mostly because I don't have the bandwidth to start anything new at this point, but I will, I will. This is uh, just a plain vanilla sock in uh, Jinx yarn in the House Cup colorway, and it's a Harry Potter inspired. I would say that's where it's washing out the color. It We've is. got a lot of sunlight coming in. Oh, that's better. There we go. All right. And so uh, you have the colorways for uh, Ravenclaw, which I would totally put mom in. Mom is such a Ravenclaw because they love, they uh, put learning above other things. They love to learn new <gasps> things. People. It is your people. Okay. And then you have the Gryffindors, which I think dad is a Gryffindor because he is always there to save the day. He is always out there helping other people and going above and beyond, you know, what the call of duty is. Uh, I am a Hufflepuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Would you agree I, with that? I totally agree with that. Okay. I'm a Hufflepuff. Where are you? Uh, they are loyal and hardworking mm -hmm. and uh, a good friend to people yes. and very caring. We don't have any Slytherins in this family. Is that a bad thing? Slytherins are cunning mm -hmm. and they are uh, very calculating ah. and try to get ahead in everything. And uh, also, they kind of tend to do whatever is going to put them first. Okay. And so... You're the ones that are going to get ahead in life. Mm-hmm. Maybe not at, always by in, hook or by crook. Right. Sometimes at other people's expense. Okay. So they're not always the good guys in mm -hmm. every situation, in, in most situations. So there you go. Your little house cup. <laughs> your, uh, your house cup education there if you are not a Harry Potter fan. So will, which one are you? I will knit with you. What's her name? Um, I forgot her name. Rebecca. Her name. Rebecca. She mm -hmm. would love that you're doing this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Rebecca, mm -hmm. you need to get some of this yarn because yes. you would love this. Uh, so that's really the only thing that I'm working on and, uh, but I'm really enjoying it. I am doing an afterthought heel. You can see that pink purple stripe right there. That's where I'm going to put in my heel. So great. There you go. I've got, I've got projects <clears throat> I'm working on, but they're mostly in boxes right now. So, yeah. I, whatever. It's all <laughs> things you've seen before. This much of this and this much of that. Mm -hmm. So, okay, you have finished a ton. So, why don't you yeah. go first and talk about what you finished? Well, all right. Last night I finished something because of, um, I would say it has a lot to do with something that we will handle in the... Are you kidding me? Okay. All right. Yes. So it is going in the mail, Heather. Close your eyes. <laughs> I'm going to do the are you kidding me along be first before I introduce okay. this, okay? Yeah. The are you kidding me is I went to all the trouble to make this beautiful. So I gorgeous. thought it was beautiful. It's gorgeous. And um, it's the rose red hat pattern. And it, it was done in a cream and a red in the hat and it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I was trying to tone it down a little bit for Heather so I thought I'd do the gray. Yeah. I, don't, I think I really prefer it in the cream. It's but still gorgeous. This check way. the pattern oh and see. But what I did was I thought, a hat? Wait, I should do a cowl. So I did, well, what I thought was two repeats, but seriously, if you folded this in half, this couldn't, that'd be a ginormous hat. Like a hat for a giant? Yeah. So uh, what I did was I just did the hat. But where you would normally, like in here, you would start doing um, um, crown decreases. I just went ahead and completed the pattern. Mm -hmm. And um, I was so proud because I even learned how to do the Latvian braid. So beautiful. And do you see what makes up the pattern here? Little hearts. Little hearts, which I thought Perfect. were quite lovely. Yes. And so I thought, this is great. She asked for an infinity scarf. And um, I was a little bit worried I was going to block it out. Okay. 
and I thought, well, maybe it could work. When I put it on, it feels like you're wearing a cardboard cowl. <laughs> no. It's just there's um, a little bit... This was done with... I'm going to forget. It's a, a, wool, a wool acrylic blend. Woolies? I don't... It is. It, it's like a Lion brand. It's a... It's not the jumbo one. It might be called Woolies. I don't okay. know, but it's it's the Lion brand one. But I've got this beautiful cowl now. I luckily I decided to try it on before I packaged it up for her. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh no, I can't send this to her. Because like, well, first of all, look at how it's doing this. It's doing this it's wonky thing. It's kind of waffly. It's waffling. Yeah. yeah. So That's even the technical though, name for it. Even though there are some beautiful things happening here, I think it's just gonna go in the trash. Oh, no, no. There's well, got to be some no. way that you can save that. I don't think so. Okay. Drastic thought. Yes. Can you steak it mm -hmm. and turn it into a table runner? Yeah, but I just don't think I need a table runner. Not for you, for Heather. I don't think she needs a table runner like this. I just think Why? it was an idea that went bad. And unfortunately, I didn't realize it till I cast off. But you know what? It's for your learning, okay? I think a color work cowl would be better in a, uh, not a worsted gauge, for mm. one thing. I think I'd try decay or sport, mm -hmm. okay? I and feel so sad. I also think that my attempts at creating an edge, I love the braided part, but I did a folded hem. You can see a folded hem that I turned mm -hmm. under. I think it just added too much bulk to it. Mm. This may have even been okay had I not added the folded hem and just ended it with the Latvian braid. But, but I think that folded hem messed that up. I just yeah. think that in, in, in general, it's not gonna, it's not hanging nice. It needs to have some bamboo maybe, or something that makes it a little drape. silkier, a little drapier. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be, a, it's a nice idea that just did not come. Oh, mom. So. I'm so sorry. You put so much work into that. I know. I can't send it to her. So I had been eyeing a pattern and I think she can totally pull this off. And it's a hound's tooth. I think it looks hound's toothy. I think it does. It's an infinity scarf, which she asked for. It's in crochet. I'm gonna put it on. I think you should. Now this. You wear that puppy. See, that's more what she had in mind, isn't it? Isn't it cute? Cute. Mm -hmm. Now I use Cascade 220 that I ordered from Amazon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I would have saved the tag, I did. If I find it when I'm updating, I'll, I'll try and post it. It's a, a color called Natural, which I love. It's very acru. That is you nice. say? Mm -hmm. Thought I was ordering black. This is not black. It's like a foresty green. Now we're getting the weird things. Can you see? It is like a midnight green. I don't know. It's called something, but I think you'd almost go three times around. Just one skein of each made this nice scarf, uh -huh. and it feels fabulous on and it's a free pattern. It's called the Houndstooth Infinity Scarf. Try it. Okay. I think you should. And then okay. tell me what you think. Now this was knit and pieced together. That's how it was made to do. But I thought it would be really fun to try it as a circle. Here we go. I got it. Right? I got it. It took me a second. Yes. I don't always enjoy crochet in a scarf. Sometimes I do, but that one I really love. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yes. I like it. Isn't that a Heathery thing? Yes. She can pull it off. Yes. So anyway, I hope she likes it. Heather. Anyway, so I burned the midnight oil trying to get that done. Hand yes. it over, baby. In fact, um, you sent me a link to something on Amazon, and I responded back at like 1230 because I woke up for some reason, and then she responded back, and I was like, oh, what? Well, Crazy, 12.38. I didn't want Heather to feel that she wasn't loved because I had yeah. done um, some gifts for Bennett, which is next. Do you have anything else to show? Um, you go ahead, you finish, and then I'll show the things I finished. You sure? Yeah. Okay. All right, so it all started because Heather asked for mittens for Bennett for Christmas, so I made this adorable little mitten pattern. It's so cute. I love it. I We got measurements from his hand. Look at the thumbs being different totally makes that. me happy and I just this morning added the string so smart so now if you've never been to cold country what parents do 
they feed the mittens through the sleeves of the jacket, mm -hmm. okay? Then this goes across the back. It's extra long. He's only going, uh, going he's like a year and a half, right? Yeah. And so what you do, if you just adjust the back by, you would do a slip knot. Look at the swirls. Do you see the swirls jumping around in the trees? I'm sorry. I it's see squirrels. It literally is a squirrel moment. Squirrel! Where? Where? They're just, they're leaping. They've been leaping around in that tree. Sorry. <laughs> just tell her you see squirrels. I, <laughs> Come on. Do, do you see the squirrels? Yes, we have squirrels. So anyway, all you do is just do a slip knot in back, and you can shorten it to whatever size you need. And so I made it extra long. And you basically, so when they take them off, they hang out the sleeves. There's no losing your mittens this way. Yeah. I've done several pairs of mittens that way. It's just a smart thing to do. You know what? I may still do that for my 11-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Put, put the string in. Really? Mm -hmm. And I think you could, on this, I would say if if I had did too much length for her, for like, so it's only a year and a half right now. Right. But you could very easily just tie a nice strong knot and cut it. For it's sure. not going to go anywhere, and it won't create any problems for him. So I had these. So then, of course, I had yarn left over. Because their mittens are tiny. I know. They are. And I did the stripe. Did you notice I did the striping with a slip stitch I transition? Did. It's very Which cute. I loved. Okay. It's very playful. It is playful. And orange is one of mom and dad's favorite colors, especially dad's. Yes. So um, then I decided, well, I should really make a hat to go with them. Mm -hmm. Because if you have mittens, you need a hat. So what's the name of this one, Brianne? Um, Norwegian Star Ear Flap Hat. The Norwegian Star Ear Flap Hat. Cutest thing ever. That is just precious. Use the same colors. Now, this is patterns. They have a basic wool. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is so funny is when you walk, is, first of all, the gray wool still. Does it smell a little bit sheepy? It does. Yeah. So it was actually brown water when I washed it. Oh, really? It. Yeah. Oh I my loved gosh. it. It was like very sheepy. <laughs> um, it's great to knit with. It's a great basic. It comes in lots of colors. I got it on Amazon for a very good deal. Pumpkin is the orange color and the gray I think is called... It just says deep, mixed gray. Yeah, I think it's like a deep mixed gray kind of. I think that was what it said on Amazon, but who knows what it really is. And then you do a... Uh, it didn't call for this. I added it. I think it's just the ear flaps, but I thought it needed strings if you're going to be a kid. Yeah. And so it calls for you to do like a plied cord. So I took the two colors and you just add a lot of extra twists to them, let them ply on themselves. Mm -hmm. And I love this hat. That is the cutest thing ever. It only comes in two sizes, child and adult. I have no idea if this will fit him now or later, but it'll fit him sometime. If I remember, he has a rather large little noggin. Well, let's hope. <laughs> because he's getting a lot of hat here. <laughs> no, I don't mean that in, like, in a bad way. Yeah. I don't think that I'm, like, dissing him or anything. Hey, but he's, Is that the he's, spirit of Christmas, young lady? No, he's, he's big for his age. He's, like, in the 90th percentile yeah. for height, and I think his head is in the 90th percentile. Lots of brains in there. Yeah, he's a smart kiddo. So then I had a little bit of yarn left over still. Yeah. I think I got two skeins of orange and one skein of gray. Mm -hmm. And so then I got to the end of that and I go, I've got all this orange because I only used it to still be on the stripe and a little bit of accent on the hat. And I've got all this orange now. What am I going to do with that? Mm -hmm. So I ordered one more skein of gray and <laughs> I made a little pullover. I love that. Okay. And this is a bait. That's doing the name of the pattern. A bait. Okay. I don't know. I forgot her name. Anyway, so cute. This is the child's version. Mm -hmm. There is an adult version. Now, if you notice, it's got a little pull, and it has a, a kind of, I would call it a mock turtleneck, mm -hmm. just because it's not like full on tall. Mm -hmm. And it has a turned hem that this goes into, and she has a very clever way of not getting extra bulk, which I think I will use. I wonder if I can say it. It's not like it's like top secret. It's not proprietary information. I don't think so, but um, I'm not gonna tell you how she constructs this, but it's a lovely knit. I enjoyed it. I put stripes on it. It's a basic uh, one, and a lot of people will do a color work. I could have repeated the um, the star pattern oh, on that. that. Too. I just wasn't sure if dad was up to that many stars. Yeah. So I went for a more basic stripey pattern. It's classic. 
Yeah, lots mm-hmm. of people did have done all different things with it. It's a very fun way to try out stuff, but this particular way of turning your collar, she did not have you bind off. She has you whip stitch live stitches. Mm. Oh. And so you end up with this nice, it still has stretch. That's nice. It doesn't have a big, look at how, yeah. you see? It's like it's, I mean, that's a nice way that's to join a finish. That. It's a good finish. It's a great finish. Mm-hmm. It's brilliant. And she she has little instructions that tell you how she does that. But I, I changed the color for the collar part just because I wanted to, and I was running low on orange, and it's a good thing because I had, like, this much left. <laughs> so... Um, but I like it with the collar, the separate collar. So I have this and the cute little hat. So cute. And the mittens. And I love it all. They don't have to go together, but I was very pleased with that. So I couldn't exactly send Bennett everything and then send Mama nothing. I thought that was rude. <laughs> Such <Aww>. fun. <laughs> all right. Is that it for you? That, I think that's enough. That's plenty. Seriously, I'd take up the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Well, of course, I have the Quaker yarn stretcher that Love. I finished for Danielle. And then uh, something I did not, it's already been gifted, but I knit the bandana cowl by Pearl Soho. You're right. And that turned out very nice. It did. Mm-hmm. I used Studio June's yarn, um, I think in the squish base. Yeah, I think that's the name of it. In, in the red color. And it is like... Branson, we are the pirates here, and Arr, that's right. Because the Ozarks are known for yeah pirates, pirates and pillaging and things like that. I don't know, but anyways, you know, um, and our colors are black and red. So I made uh, the red I thought was really yeah you know very great. So I gave that to Owen's teacher, and then um, I gave a scarf from my gift box or a cap no. A shawl from the, my gift box to Alish's teacher, which was in like a red and gray. Oh, fun! So I thought that was perfect. I'd made that like two years ago. Yeah. So it's like score. I didn't have to actually like knit it before yeah. you know handing it off. I did done the work two years ago. So smart. So smart. Um, and then I finished my power socks by uh, Turtle Maids. Uh, this is her power sock color or base in the was it berries yes berries you know i pulled up one so i um they are have a, like where this one starts with the kind of raspberryish color on top this one starts with the purplish color so they're kind of like opposites I like it. Yes. I like it a lot. So we finished those, and I think these are going to wear... They feel great. Like these are going to be feel strong. Great on your feet. Yes. So I am on the lookout for... Um, I'd love to knit another pair of socks out of this particular uh, base, because I think they're going to be super strong and last forever. Mm-hmm. So, yay. Thank you, Jen, for... Apocalypse socks. Apocalypse socks! Yes, I have socks like. Don't you have socks like that, mm-hmm. where they're just gonna last forever? Yep, seems like it. Yes, Let's hope. Yes, so I finished this, and I believe that's it. I finished three things. Okay, good job. So I was happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Thank you. And you already did. You did your. Are you kidding me? I We're kind of moving right along here. Um, it's a good thing. Yes. What's your? It's a good thing. Here. <laughs> this is a flashback to my childhood. My mom used to buy these sprinkle covered animal cookies. Uh-huh. Brienne? Yes. And I, <laughs> Brienne got some, was it last year? Mm-hmm. And she came home from hospital duty and <laughs> I didn't eat them. She totally did. So it's mm-hmm. a good thing. These are from Target, but actually, I think. Um, they are made by several companies, but they're little animal shapes. Let's see if I can get out of the glare. Come on now. Are you seeing it? Look! Little shapes. I have no idea what animal that is. Well, I think it's... That's got a tusk. I think it's some sort of a woolly mammoth, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Woolly mammoth! (laughs) It's got 
Mm-hmm. So it's a um, Blake Lair is bad right now. But anyway, it is a. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my hand? <laughs> Red, uh, maybe? No. It's just a biscuit cookie, I would say, mm-hmm. with a frosting that's icy and crunchy because of the sprinkles. Yes. Um, we such could a good eat about 52 of them. Yeah, the serving size is five, but we could <gasps> eat 52. Oops. <laughs> and it comes in this cute little teddy bear canister. Mm-hmm. That was my good thing. His hubby brought it home, and I was like, better than flowers, my friend. <laughs> I love one it. more. That's it. Just one more. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I think I'm I'm thankful for. Mm. I think is a good thing. Very helpful brothers. Mm. You know, Jared has uh, come over mm-hmm. and been so helpful in moving boxes and getting things, helping unpack and putting up, helping to put up a Christmas tree for us. Mm-hmm. And they even put the lights on it so that all we had to do was put ornaments on it like that was all the kids had to do mm-hmm. so sweet and Isaac has been so helpful I mean no grumbling it was all just whatever no. what can I do absolutely I think mean, seeing the family mm-hmm. you know really pull together and mm-hmm. trying to get everything unpacked and ready for Christmas um, has been very heartwarming well, well, bear with <laughs> bear with <laughs> We also had a family member who took Evan for a few hours, yes. a couple days to help Brian, my cousin, be able mm-hmm. to um, unpack. And then we had another family member, my brother mm-hmm. and my sister-in-law, who brought lunch to us the first day. Yes. Which, you know, of course, none of us had thought about, oh, we'll need food. I know. We're unpacking all day. But we have Scentsy out, so our house I is going to smell good. <laughs> It'll smell like food, but no food out there. <laughs> You're right. It is wonderful. Now, it's a good reminder of, you know, I suppose when you get the phone call, can you help me, help me move? That's not something that everybody goes, oh, yippee, you yeah. know? Yeah. But uh, what a blessing to someone to offer your services. And a lot of times, you know, people say, well, let me know if I can do something. Right. And we, how often do we actually tell somebody something they can do for us? Oh, yeah. Because we feel like, oh, well, I don't want to say so or whatever. But it's actually a blessing to the person, I think. If they've asked, yeah, what can I do? Yeah. When you say that, don't you really mean it? I do. Like, I really would like to help you, but I really don't know how. Right. How do you need help? Right. And sometimes when you're in the middle of a, a, a horrible thing, you don't exactly know. You have to guess for the person because they probably don't know themselves what they mean. Right. But um, I think it's neat that um, we turned off the guilt machine. Yeah. Right? And we just yeah. say, yes, I do need help. And yes. it, it felt so nice to just have somebody come in and say, well, what can I do? And you just say, okay, could you move some boxes for me? Could right. You? Yeah. I just need these taken upstairs. Can you yeah. take these upstairs for me? Or, yeah. you know, can you break down boxes? Or um, we, we were both, my, my back was killing me. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, t- actually, today is the first day it's felt good mm-hmm. uh, because I took like two days of just doing less because I was afraid I was doing some permanent damage. So yeah, it was like really hurting to lift things. So it was, it was such a blessing. Mm-hmm. It's very I'm, that's a gooseberry for me too. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing. Did you get a chance ever? Of course, I'm thinking now. I had. Yeah, we have a. Let's see, we've got two more things left on our list of things to do. Are we going to do the contest thing first? Because I we have such a fun thing that we'd like to end with, right? We do. You're forgetting. I am forgetting. Whisper in my ear. Oh, gosh. I did forget. Right? Yeah. Oh, lordy. <laughs> <laughs> we have fun plans. Sorry. Oh, gosh. That, wh- why do a podcast if you're keeping secrets between yourself? <laughs> Just <laughs> makes no sense. I haven't practiced for that. I don't care. We're going oh, with it. Mm. If we don't go now, it's going to be too late. Okay. 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 So let's talk about our contest first. Okay. Because we have a contest going on. So I'm going to read this. Ready? For the months of November and December, we are focusing on family and thankfulness. 
we want to hear about any holiday family traditions you have and or what you are thankful for. So I'm thankful for family members who are helpful. Mom's thankful for family members who are helpful, who bring us food when we don't think about it, who take our kids, mm -hmm. offer to take our kids. That's huge. It is. Huge. Uh, this contest goes through December 28th, and the winner will receive a drawstring bag and notions bag set from Chicken Soup Designs. And I pulled it out of the bag before we recorded, See. just before we recorded, so that we don't have to have crinkling. Yes. But look at how cute this bag is. It's adorable. Okay. That is a perfect size for a pair of socks, for a hat, mittens. Hey, I was wandering through the country notions. and learned a little tidbit about chickens. What? Because, you know, you'll find just roaming chickens sometimes by someone's house. Yeah. They, they eat, like, fleas and ticks and stuff. Really? So, I'm getting some chickens. <laughs> Yeah, city now. <laughs> That's right. We don't get to be the bosses of ourselves anymore. We're not the boss anymore. Dang it. Um, so, you must be a member to win. One post per person, and the winner will be chosen by random number generator. I believe we have like 65 entries uh, in that right now. Isn't so that great? And I've loved... Uh, Oh, it's very heartwarming, isn't it? It is. Just to hear what makes a, a holiday special. And holidays can be very difficult for people. Absolutely. I lost uh, my grandfather, um, one of my grandfathers, mm -hmm. at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's always that, re there's that, always that memory. Mm -hmm. And it was always hard for my grandmother. And so we were, were extra, did extra things for her during that time period to mm -hmm. kind of help her with that. But, you know, you can't help that sometimes... Uh, life inconveniently throws you curveballs that yes. makes a holiday a hard time. But you can choose to do what brings you joy during mm -hmm. that time period and focus on that as opposed yeah. to focusing on what did not go right. And that's a, uh, a work in progress for most that's people. Right. If it is a difficult holiday for you, it's not something you can just all of a sudden be, oh goody. And you know, not everybody has a wonderful relationships with family members. No. And so they... I have um, a friend who uh, has difficult relationships with her family, mm -hmm. and so you know she spends the holidays with her friends. That's what she. That's her family. She calls them her family 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's her second family, the the family that she has chosen for herself, and so. And we usually try and um, include people who may not have mm -hmm. family in the area. And I don't know this year because we are a bit, you know, out of it with moving and everything that um, we won't be doing that this year. But um, usually we do. We mm -hmm. try and look for is there somebody who is not able to get home for Christmas or don't right. have a home to go to they want. Yeah. They need somebody's um, love and attention. You envelop them in your, your own traditions and find out what theirs are. It's really fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Open your home. That's right. So... That's it for the contest. It is. Look on Ravelry for that thread. It's still uh, stickied, and it'll go until uh, the middle of next week or beginning of next week. We might see if we can throw some extra goodies in there because I'm always a big fan of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. If I can find something, unpack it. As soon as I unpack it, you'll get it. <laughs> All right. But we have such a fun thing. I am so excited. I can't tell you how excited I am. Am I excited? I think you are. I am. <laughs> Okay, if you do not know our beloved James the Dancing Geek, mm -hmm. he has, although I heard on somebody's podcast today, he's not on YouTube. I wonder if I misheard. I he think he's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Well, he's been on YouTube. I mm -hmm. don't know. She thought he was on Ustream now or something like that. Okay. Well, anyway, well, last time I saw him, he was on YouTube. But he does these, like, just like you're in his house, honestly, it is really just a live stream of consciousness. Just whatever is on his mind, whatever projects he's working on. And he is delightful. He is. We have all fallen in love with James the Dancing Geek. Yes. So, when Brianne started the luxurious and fascinating and <laughs> loved iTunes dance. Yes. Oh, of course, who was the first person I thought of was... James the Dancing Geek, of and course. I started plotting and planning, and I said, yes, you did. we need to start including others in our 
iTunes dance tradition, celebrating those of you who are kind enough to leave reviews. And you know, it, it's it's okay if it's if you leave a comment on YouTube, or maybe you leave a sweet comment on our thread. Mm -hmm. But especially for YouTube, YouTube um, comments, iTunes? Uh, iTunes comments, because they actually help us be found. Yes, there's a lot of people out there. And so, um, if if you would like others to help us. I don't know. Do you want other people to find us? Nah. Or are we just that really secret <laughs> cool thing that nobody else knows about that you get to know? <laughs> or maybe you don't want other people to know you watch us. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> Hopefully that's not it. <laughs> but Brienne began her celebration dance for iTunes. And I, I just, you know, it's my favorite thing. And, you know, so anyway, James was so sweet. And he has blessed us with an iTunes dance, mm -hmm. and through the magic of technology, Brianne and James mm -hmm. will be dancing together to celebrate you, all of you <laughs> who watch and review. Okay, now, are you ready? No. <laughs> oh, too bad. Ready or not, here we come. And hit it. Hi, Mama Linda. Hi, Marianne. I am very honoured um, to be invited to dance with you as part of the iTunes review dance. As you can see, I have set up my little corner. Um, I feel a little bit like I'm in a Santa's grotto now. Um, but I like it. So I'm going with this, this whole setup. I hope you don't mind. Um, I did think about like recording it outside and being like full bodied and then I thought no I'm gonna go with sat down Brianne style um, and then we could then you could do a bit of the back and forth I, I don't know anyway I decided to go with this um, and I'm sure you'll be absolutely happy either way <laughs> um, now I know that you will probably edit over with your own music, but I was chatting today with Dave from FO and I, and I was, t oh, I can't even remember why, it was something about call outs and then saying people's names, and then I sang a little song, um, because, you know, why wouldn't you? And it reminded me of a piece of music that I really like. Um, it's, it's kind of insane. So you are quite within your rights to, to to mute the video at this point. I'm just turning all of my other notifications off so that nothing else is going to disturb. There we go, that should be enough. Uh, but it still should play. And then I'm just going to improv. I haven't prepared anything at this point. I'm just going to channel, channel Brienne. Are you ready for this music? Just make sure it's actually going to play. Bear with. Bear with. <laughs> Bear with. There we go. Oh, my hat's coming off. Calm down. Second round. The face is important. Good legs. The music does keep going for a long time, <laughs> but I think that should be enough. Um, just just so you know, it's it's 
called the Doom Song. It's by a cartoon character, but this is a dubstep remix of it, so just so you can see. Any second now the camera will focus. There we go. So it's the character Gur from Invader Zim. And he sings a little thing, song called the Doom Song. And then somebody did a dubstep remix of it and I love it. I love it to pieces. Right, if this is too long then it will be massive and then uploading it and downloading it will be awful for both of us. So I'm going to stop there. Um, Merry Christmas, although we're not quite there yet. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, for last week. Um, you guys are awesome, so I thought I'd add that in there as well. Much love. Bye James, thank you so much. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye. So we had some technical difficulties. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> a little bit. So we'll have to do the dance. Well we may add it in if we can get mm -hmm. the dance Okay, well, we just won't go into it. If it's there, I hope you enjoyed it. If it's not there, sorry, here we are. <laughs> it's just us. Um, but anyways, we wanted to say to everyone a Merry Christmas, a Happy yes. Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa. However you celebrate this time of year, if you celebrate, we want to say I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful yes. time. A blessed, blessed holiday. That's right. And... Uh, I hope that you get in lots of knitting and lots of wonderful time with family and friends. Yes. And until next time, yes. you just remember that you, you are, are knitworthy. Bye. Bye, y'all.